In this video, we're going to analyze a situation where a cart starts from rest at the top of a hill of height h and slides to the bottom of that hill and then under the influence of a braking force comes to rest. And what I'd like to do is use calculus to derive equations for the velocity and acceleration of this cart as a function of time along that horizontal section of the track where it experiences the braking force. We can start by saying that if the only resistive or frictional force that the cart experiences is the braking force, then on the section of track where it's falling down the ramp before it begins braking, the mechanical energy of the cart earth system would be conserved. And for that reason, we could set the mechanical energy at the top of the hill equal to the mechanical energy at the bottom of the hill. And so the gravitational potential energy of the cart earth system should be equal to the kinetic energy of the cart at the bottom of the hill. And so the initial speed um, along the horizontal section of track, v naught, is given by the square root of 2g times the cart's initial height, h. And now let's say once the uh, cart is at that position where it has a velocity v naught, it applies the braking force. And let's say that the braking force that it applies is equal to minus k, which is a constant, times v, which is the velocity of the cart at any particular moment in time. So the braking force depends on the velocity of the cart and a constant k. If our goal is to write equations for the velocity and acceleration of this cart as a function of time, then we need to write equations that allow us to relate the braking force to the initial velocity of the cart uh, in an equation that also includes time. And so the way that we typically do this is we use Newton's second law of motion, which says that the net force acting on that cart is equal to the mass of the cart times the acceleration of the cart. And so on the horizontal section of track, the only force that acts in the direction of the motion of the cart is the braking force, minus k times v. And on the right-hand side of the equation, um, I can write, instead of ma, I can express the acceleration as dv dt. And this is useful because I can use the separation of variables technique to integrate both sides and arrive at an equation for the velocity of the compartment as a function of time. So what I'd like to do is separate the common variables. Um, and so the way that I'll do that is I will divide both sides of the equation by m, multiply both sides of the equation by dt, and divide both sides of the equation by v. And what we're left with is minus k over m times dt equals 1 over v times dv. And the reason why this is so useful is because now I can integrate the left-hand side of this equation, which includes dt, from the time where t equals 0, which will be the place where the cart has an initial velocity v naught to an arbitrary time t between where t equals 0 and it has stopped at the edge of the track. And I can integrate the right hand side, which includes v and dv, from the velocity at the time t equals 0, which is v naught, to the velocity at an arbitrary time t which is v, which is the same variable in the braking force equation, minus kv. And so now I need to integrate both sides of the equation. Um, so the integral of 1 dt is just t, and so the left-hand side of the equation is minus kt 
over m, which needs to be evaluated at 0 and t. And the right-hand side of the equation, the integral of 1 over v is the natural log of v. So ln of v, which needs to be evaluated at the initial velocity and the arbitrary velocity v. And so when I evaluate both sides of the equation, on the left-hand side, I will get minus k over m times t minus 0. And when I evaluate the right-hand side of the equation, I will get the natural log of v minus the natural log of v naught. So of course on the left hand side minus kt over m and the right hand side of the equation the log of a minus the log of b is equal to the log of a over b. So I have the natural log of v over v naught and if I exponentiate both sides of the equation we know that uh, the natural log and e are inverse of one another and what I will end up with on the left hand side is e to the minus kt over m is equal to what is inside the expression for the natural log which is v over v naught. And so the uh, equation for the velocity of this cart as a function of time is v equals v naught times e to the minus kt over m. And this equation could always be checked by plugging in t equals zero and seeing what the velocity is. And so what we should find is that if we plug in t equals zero we will get e to the 0, which is equal to 1, which will leave us with a velocity of v naught, which is what it should be, right? When the time was equal to 0, the velocity of the cart was v naught. And so now we should be able to take the derivative of this equation for the velocity to find the equation for the acceleration of the cart as a function of time. And so we'll start on the left-hand side by writing v equals v naught times e to the minus kt over m. And I need to take the derivative of that equation, right? Because the acceleration of the cart is dv dt. And so the time derivative d dt of the velocity function, which is v naught e to the minus kt over m, if I write this as a equals, would be given by the function itself, which is v naught e to the minus kt over m, multiplied by the derivative of the exponent. And the derivative of the exponent minus kt over m would just be minus k over m. And so here is the equation for the acceleration of the compartment as a function of time. And once again, we could check if the time is equal to zero, what do we get for the acceleration? If the time is equal to zero, we would once again get e to the zero, which is equal to one. And so the acceleration would be equal to minus kv naught over m. And by Newton's second law, we know that the net force acting on the cart should be equal to the cart's mass times its acceleration. And the force acting on the cart was minus kV. The mass of the cart is m. And if the acceleration is minus kV naught over m, then we should be able to see that um, this equation makes sense, right? The minus k's on both sides of the equation cancel, the m's on the right-hand side of the equation cancel, and the equation says v equals v naught. So the velocity um, at the moment where 
the time is zero and the acceleration is minus k v naught over m is equal to v naught. And so this is how you would uh, derive equations for the velocity and acceleration of a cart that is stopping under the influence of a braking force.